You're back with The Nation. On Monday last week, Prime Minister John Key inadvertently committed New Zealand to a war in Korea. By Tuesday, he'd pulled back again. He downplayed his comments by saying it would have to be an extreme situation for New Zealand to get involved in any conflict there. At this stage, all international efforts are focused on persuading Pyongyang to back down from its so-called belligerent behaviour. My next guests have all had some experience with North Korea. Professor In Soo Park, who was born in South Korea and is a member of the Korean Society of New Zealand, joins us. Uh, Chao Ming Huang is a professor of international relations at Victoria University. Thank you both for joining us. In Wellington, Associate Professor Stephen Epstein from Victoria University, who has studied contemporary Korean culture. And in Christchurch, astronomy professor John Hernshaw, who spent time in North Korea last year. Welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us this morning. Professor Huang, if I can start with you, can you put in context for us a little bit our relationship with both North and South Korea? Yeah, well, New Zealand uh, relation with, um, has both relation with North and South Korea, and they're actually quite unique. And so, and I think uh, uh, the crisis we see now uh, in terms of nuclear uh, Crisis in in the, uh, in in the behavior of North Korea, and I think it put this in in in, in a challenge for uh, New Zealand. I mean, in some way, uh, in a piece you mentioned that uh, you know, John Key was asked about, you know, how he might actually uh, yes. take action if something happened. This is actually the broad picture that we have uh, a quite. Uh, um, in fact, the John Key is in China now. We have good relation with China, and you know economic relations and and broad uh, diplomatic relations, and that question has become important in the sense that uh, 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 our relation with China will have impact in terms of how we do things in the region and in countries. So we have to be aware of our relationship with, with China when it comes yes. to the rhetoric. Okay, Associate Professor Stephen Epstein, what are we dealing with here when we're dealing with North Korea? Well, we're dealing <clears throat> with a regime that is in, in, feels embattled and is trying to get the uh, attention of the world and finds that the best way to do that and to try and wring concessions and to further its interests is through blackmail. And it has often attempted to provoke the world, to provoke its neighbors, South Korea, Japan, the United States, with outrageous statements and will often, uh, we've seen this as a repeating pattern, that it will ratchet up the tension and then at some point when it sees that it's to its interest to try to start up negotiations again, will pull back. And I suspect that we're going to see something like that in this case as well. But the rhetoric has been much more violent this time than ever before. Indeed, Professor John Hernshaw, do you agree? Has um, North Korea become something of uh, the Iran, if you like, of Asia? Well, uh, yes, I think um, that's true. And it's very unfortunate that they're following this path. The thing I want to emphasize um, from the experience of my visit is actually North Koreans are just normal people. They're very warm-hearted, fun-loving people and very dynamic and cultured people, well-educated. And the picture we have of North Korea is very different uh, in the Western media. So uh, if you actually go there and meet the people, they, there are 24 million people in North Korea and they don't want to be in this situation and they want to break out of this uh, impossible uh, hole they find themselves in and do something. But I have to say that the military way out is actually not going to work. The way to uh, get out of this situation is to have contacts with um, other countries, uh, friendly contacts and exchanges, and that's not, not what is happening now. Professor In Su Park, how would the Korean community here in New Zealand, do you think, like to see our government approach the situation in Korea? Yes. Um, I think New Zealand government is one of the countries which have diplomatic relations both with South Korea and North Korea. So it is possible at this moment uh, New Zealand government can send their diplomatic envoy to Seoul and Pyongyang to ease the tensions. You think that we should send a diplomatic envoy there to help? Yes, I think so. Have you had any contact with anyone in Korea at the moment? Have you had any feedback from people at home on how they view the situation at the moment? No, they are generally speaking, Many Korean community in Auckland and throughout the nationwide in New Zealand, many 
they have many friends and relatives in Korea. They are very worried about the situation that is currently provoked by North Korea to other governments near around South Korea, including South Korea, Japan and the United States, and so on. Professor Epstein, why do you think we've seen this change? You know, we have new leadership in North Korea, but why suddenly has this rhetoric changed, do you think, and now this posturing is taking place? Oh, well, you're right to point to the change in leadership there, but we're seeing changes in leadership in a variety of ways. For one thing, South Korea has a new president who was just uh, inaugurated in, in February. And so I think this is definitely part of a strategy to test out what the responses are going to be. Also, just having Obama enter his second term, that there has been a shift. There's a new secretary of state as well. The other thing that people should be aware of, and I think that we may see a change in what, what is happening is that on uh, Monday, on the 15th, is Kim Il-sung's birthday, and that's the biggest holiday of the year in North Korea. So at the moment, they're preparing for celebration, and a lot of analysts are looking to see that perhaps there may be something like a missile launch in the next day or two, um, either tomorrow or perhaps on Monday itself, as a way of signaling that they're, they're doing the celebration, and then we may see a, a declaration of, of victory from North Korea at, at at that point, and then there may be a, an attempt to, to start negotiations. But I think it's this confluence of a number of new people that are in, in power in, in Northeast Asia. Professor Huang, what is in China's best interest in this situation? This time, in, in response to what happened last uh, uh, couple of months uh, since the launch of the, of the missile and the nuclear device, and I think China in a, in a difficult situation. Um, and, and this time, China goes along with that UN um, uh, resolution sanctioning on, on North Korea. But I think, uh, I mean, in terms of looking at the uh, North Korea and why they behave the way they behave, I mean, I think that there certainly is an internal politics that new leadership need to establish and consolidate its uh, its position. But also in terms of that issue itself, long history, 10 years from 1991, it's an on and off part of, the, part of that long pattern. And so, and also the broader regional um, dynamics uh, country involved. Uh, and and yeah, I think things that uh, uh, today, yesterday coming out is that, you know, parties, major parties trying to cool down the situation. And what happened if, in terms of China is that there's a question, debate about, I mean, earlier uh, talking about sending envoy to there. And I think uh, there's debate about which way to go, uh, you know, whether it's a more pressure on, on North Korea or more, you know, sending people in a start to a diplomatic resolution. And, then, and I think China probably will uh, see an opportunity at this time uh, looking, working with uh, South Korea, uh, the new president, and to look at actually building up the the relation between the two Koreans, and on that basis, and I think can cool down a little bit, and I think that's probably you will know, will happen in, in in the days come. Professor um, Epstein, is it in China's interest to be seen to be in control of this situation, as opposed to perhaps America controlling the situation? I suppose it depends on whose perspective you're looking at on, on this, whether you're talking about for, for China, for the, the Korean Peninsula. I think what's been interesting is that, that China has been very quiet throughout this particular situation. They have supported the UN Security Council resolution, but they have been uh, very quiet, I, deliberately so, and probably with some discussion about the fact that the, U, the U.S. has been flying B-52s up to the border to indicate uh, military preparedness. Now, that's something that China would obviously not want to see increased U.S. influence in the, the Korean Peninsula, but I think they're signaling that they are in support, and I think that they want to actually take a back seat at the moment and, and let uh, South Korea and America be seen as, as dealing with North Korea in the first instance. Professor John uh, Hernshaw, what chance do you think of this actually escalating and ending in a conflict? Well, I think um, the military in North Korea, which is a very large organization which really controls the, the whole country, must know that if 
they spark a conflict, they're going to lose. So that's not their aim. I don't think it really is uh, to, uh, going to be an act of self-destruction. But they, uh, the military obviously think they can extract concessions from Western powers. And um, I think that's what they're trying to do. But it's a very dangerous situation. I, I think the chance of, of real all-out war is quite low. But oh. there may be a few skirmishes which wouldn't do anyone any good either. All right, Professor John Hernshaw and uh, Professor Epstein, appreciate your time this morning. Also, Professors uh, Insu Park and Cha Wing Huang, thank you as well for your thank time. You.